complex hardware accelerated transcoding. I've talked about it before, made a video, had a few flaws with it, but now I've actually done some real testing and I have some better results. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Bite My Bits. And like I said in the intro, I am talking about Plex Hardware Accelerated Transcoding. Now, if you saw the video that I made before, I used an old 560 Ti in my test Plex server running an i7-3770. Now, the problem I ran into when I made this video is that the processor I was using was already just barely new enough to support some hardware accelerated transcoding. And the graphics card that I was using was a 560 Ti, which just did not support it. So now while in today's video, I am still using the i7-3770. However, the difference here is that I am using a 980 Ti from Zotac. It's the Extreme Pro Plus, I don't know, something. Now I didn't use this video card the first time because it was part of my main rig and taking that entire main rig down just to test out the video, well, it was kind of a pain. I was really hoping to get away with the 560. But now I have the 1080 Ti, so the 980 Ti is just sitting around doing nothing. So what that means is I actually have some good results to talk about today. So let's go ahead and move on with that video and let's cover the test file that I used for these numbers. I decided to encode a test Deadpool file, a high 4.2 profile, 56.1 megabits per second in 8-bit. Now this 8-bit is actually very important. When I tried to do it with 10-bit, I ran into some issues where my i7-3770 was just a little bit too old and could not handle that hardware accelerated decoding. So I went through, re-encoded it, lowered it down, changed the profile, changed the bit, and I basically used a smaller file size. The file size was about 3.5 six gigabytes. That was mainly because it was going to take like five hours to encode this video. And all I needed was like five to 10 minutes. So I just stopped it. Moving on, this is a resolution of 3840 by 1606 and a chroma color sample of 420. Now for my testing, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Normally I go all the way down to two megabits per second, but this time I went to 20 megabits, 12 megabits, 10 megabits, eight, four, and finally three megabits. Pretty much just one quality setting all the way down the line until the thing stopped working. So now keep in mind that this is a 4K video file. Yes, the file size itself is smaller because it's a shorter video clip, but it is still a very high resolution. And if you have, you know, kind of a mediocre server, your server could buckle a little bit when you're trying to play 4K video files. Take for example, without the Plex hardware accelerated transcoding turned on, I was only able to get a solid, and I say solid loosely, two different streams, one at 20 and one at 12 megabits per second. When I try to start the third, it started to basically just wig out. And with an i7-3770 processor, it's kind of understandable. I mean, it's a hefty file. But when I enabled Plex hardware accelerated transcoding, things got exciting where I was able to actually get five streams at the same time. That's five total streams at the same time. That's going from 20 to 12 to 10 to eight, et cetera. Now I was keeping an eye on my graphics card and it looked like throughout this entire testing process, it was only bouncing between 22 to 36% GPU utilization throughout the entire test. Now what I believe, and I've tried to do as much research on this as I could, I believe that there is an NVIDIA limitation, like a driver limitation to only allow two decoding streams through hardware accelerated decoding at the same time. But if you kind of think about it, getting five, almost six streams out of this really makes a lot of sense. Let's just say, for example, that limitation of two streams through hardware accelerated decoding is a real thing. And I'm gonna assume it is. I found it in a couple different places on the good old interwebs. So the two main streams that I started beforehand was 20 megabits per second and 12 megabits per second. Now these are gonna be the toughest streams for the server to re-encode. They're a higher bit rate, higher resolution, etc. They're just gonna take the most processing power. But with both of those offloaded onto the GPU, that allows the CPU to be reserved for the other streams. In this case, three additional streams. Those of course being 10, eight and four megabits per second. So if you circle back to the original one where I told you I can only get two, almost three, and now we're lowering the bit rate, we're lowering the amount of uh, re-encoding that the Plex server has to do, getting those three extra streams on top of the two streams that the GPU is handling, 
that actually makes a lot of sense. So on the surface, just from these test results, adding a nice graphics card to your Plex Media Server can add at least two additional streams onto what it can already handle. However, if it is a driver limitation to only having two concurrent hardware accelerated decoding streams at the same time, then that would mean that, well, honestly, you don't need a 980 Ti or 1050 or anything like that. Technically, you could probably get away with the 700 series if you wanted to, because with the graphics utilization hovering around between 26 to 36% during my entire testing process, the 980 Ti was basically just going to waste. Now the test doesn't stop there. I wanted to run a couple more things. First of all, let's talk about seek time. When I'm taking it down to 20 megabits per second from the 56 megabit root file, I wanted to see how fast I can move forward in that video. What was the delay? Now my server is already running not only the media file itself, but also the transcoding folder are both on SSDs. Running them on SSDs is my way of ensuring that I'm not running into any kind of limitations on a hard drive speed. Of course, there still had limitations of the processor, etc. but that's just one variable I wanted to take out of the equation. But while I was running this and testing the seek time to move ahead in the movie, and I was just running off of the processor and not the GPU, I was having a seek time of 13, almost 14 seconds. It's kind of gross, I know, but it gets better. <sighs> However, you throw a GPU in the mix and that gets taken down to a little bit under four seconds. Four seconds, almost shaving 10 seconds right off the top. Eh, more like nine seconds, but you get the point. So 13.23 seconds versus 3.93 seconds give or take. That's cool and all, but what about the quality? I mean, on Plex's own help site, they actually state that hardware accelerated transcoding can lower the quality of video files, especially if you're going at or below 720p. Well, during my testing, I watched them back to back. I changed the server settings. I used the CPU. I used the GPU. I, I changed the quality back to the three megabits per second. And then I tried it again with 1.5 megabits per second. And I didn't really see anything different. However, when I get into editing, as you will see on the screen, you will be able to see a side-by-side -side comparison of what the quality is between the two. For example, here on your left, you'll see the GPU transcoding, and here on your right, you'll see the CPU transcoding. And this is going to be at three megabits per second. Hey, at this point, because I haven't actually edited this video, I don't know if there's any major difference in the quality, but at least you can see for yourself and make your own determination. Just take a couple factors into consideration here. One, it was recorded and re-encoded by OBS. Two, it was edited and then re-encoded by Premiere Pro. Three, it was uploaded to YouTube and re-encoded again. So there's gonna be a little bit of loss there. Also something to note, and this is probably gonna be a topic for another video. Yes, when you're transcoding down from a 4K video file, to something lesser, it pretty much washes out the colors. I've done a little bit of research. I'm not gonna say anything now because I wanna make a dedicated video on that, but that is a thing. Your eyes are not deceiving you. In fact, here's what the video quality looks like when it's playing directly. So there's definitely a huge difference between transcoding a 4K video file or a direct playing it. Now, before I give you my conclusion, I do wanna share something else that I found interesting. See, while I was running this test, the entire thing reconfirmed itself by showing me the progress bar of the buffer on the video I was watching. For example, I'll put it down below, but the one on the very bottom is going to be the GPU accelerated transcoding, whereas the one above it is the CPU transcoding. As you can see, that little GPU one is just chugging along like two or three times faster than the CPU is. Honestly, that's pretty cool. That allows you to smoothly play and fast forward just a little bit, especially if you're only going uh, fast forward just a few seconds. So, you know, that's a big deal, just being able to have that extra buffer and have it hit your client faster faster than what it would on a CPU. Either way, I kind of thought it was interesting, so. So in conclusion, adding a GPU, as long as it's good enough to be able to get at least a couple streams out of your server, but not complete overkill like a 980 or a 1080 Ti, could be very beneficial to your media server. Now, digging around on the internet, I did find that you need at least a 700 series or newer from NVIDIA in order to handle that hardware accelerated transcoding. I found one place that said even 600 series would do the job as well, but I haven't really confirmed, actually I haven't confirmed any of this. I'm just going off what the internet's telling me. But I've seen 700 stone around a lot, so possibly 600s. The point is, you're not gonna run out and buy a 600 series or a 700 series if you don't have to. So if you have one of these laying around, throw it in your server, turn on the hardware accelerated transcoding option in Plex, and see if it makes a difference. 
But anyways, hopefully this answered a few questions, opened a couple eyes, show you what a hardware accelerate transcoding can do, and hopefully it was way better than the last video when I attempted this the first time. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, post them down below. Thank you for watching, like, and subscribe, and have yourself a good day. Now digging around, I did see that at least a 700 series or newer graphics card from NVIDIA should support hardware. <laughs> now digging around, I did find that